Report. Hypothermia is an injury that is just beginning to be understood by modern scientists. Hypothermia is the lowering of the body core temperature. The core is the critical inner portion of the body, including the heart, brain, and lungs. The core is where life remains if there is any chance for survival. Before you can understand hypothermia, you need to know that the circulatory system controls the body temperature much like a hot water heating system does in a home. When the arms or legs get cold, the core sends warm blood out to rewarm them. The core can't afford to send out more warm blood without cooling itself. It then reduces blood flow to these areas in order to minimize its own heat loss. However, if too much heat is lost from the body, it will die. The main areas of the body to protect from heat loss are the head, neck, armpits, sides, and groin, because they are the areas of greatest heat loss. Take him in. Get those clothes off him. How do you recognize that someone is hypothermic? The symptoms of hypothermia include feeling cold, shivering, the loss of coordination, slurred or unusual speech, confusion, impaired judgment, and near the end, feelings of warmth and euphoria, sort of a natural high. In time, the person becomes unconscious. The heart beats erratically, resulting in death by what appears to be a heart attack. In the field, you don't have a means of measuring body core temperature and other vital signs. You cannot rely on symptoms alone to decide how severe the case of hypothermia is. For example, some people don't shiver, and also the victim may not believe he has hypothermia. If a person is improperly sheltered from cold or wet conditions, and he might be hypothermic, it makes good sense to treat him for hypothermia. Hey, Red, give me a hand. Red, give me a hand. Unfortunately, many of the old treatments can be dangerous. Really, I'm going all right. For example, don't rewarm the whole body by putting the victim in a hot shower. A hot shower or tub rewarms the surface of arms and legs. This sends a message to the body that it's okay to open circulation to those cold extremities. Vital warm blood sent from the core rapidly cools as it passes through cold arms and legs. When it gets back to the heart, that shot of cold blood can cause an unusual heartbeat which results in the heart muscle starting to shiver rather than pump. The patient then has a heart attack. Another old treatment is to give alcohol. It's also dangerous. Like a hot shower, it fools the body into thinking it's warm when it isn't. Want to give him some coffee? In fact, any liquid can be dangerous no hot because the hypothermia victim yeah. is not just cold. He may also be in shock and you can't give any liquid to a shock victim. He could throw it up, draw the vomit into his lungs, and die from aspiration pneumonia. Let's be real easy with him. So, to treat hypothermia safely, be slow and gentle. How you feeling, Hank? Cold. Don't jar the victim. A hypothermia victim who is being rewarmed should be treated very gently. A sudden jar or shock can also cause an apparent heart attack. It is a fact that even though treatment is progressing, a hypothermia victim's body temperature continues to drop before it starts to rise again. The victim is very vulnerable at this time. To rewarm a hypothermia victim, use only those treatments that are always safe. The first part of treatment is to take them out of the cold to prevent further heat loss. At this point, the body may not be able to rewarm itself. Blankets will not rewarm a cold body. They only insulate. You need a heat source. First, wrap the cold arms and legs to keep them from rewarming too quickly as you attempt to rewarm the body core of the victim. Then, rewarm the high heat loss areas, the head, neck, armpits, sides, and groin of the victim. The most effective, safe way to rewarm hypothermia victims in the field is to use warm objects and body-to-body -body rewarming.
Warm objects are literally anything that is warm, including warm rocks, lukewarm hot water bottles, warm heating pads, warm packs, or even warm potatoes. But be careful. Be absolutely sure that the objects are not hot. You can burn the victim because of their cold-induced numbness. Hypothermia victims won't be able to tell you if the object is too hot. Check on it yourself, like you would a baby's bath. If it feels uncomfortably warm to you, it's too hot for the victim. This one to skip this under his neck. Got a stocking cap ready? Yes. Just head up and slide it on. Okay, take this cap. Okay, Hank, lay your head down nice and easy. Okay. Let's see if we can't start warming up the sides. Let's go body to body. Just you get your shirt off, right? Body-to-body rewarming is when one or more warm, healthy people embrace the victim within some insulated shelter such as blankets or a sleeping bag. If this treatment is used, one should continue the treatment for at least an hour. Okay, just take it easy now. We're going to stay here until you get a little bit warmer, okay? We're going to stay there for a while. Okay. These rewarming treatments are safe, slow, and gentle. Don't rush them and be sure to protect the victim from further cold and from shocks or sudden moves. To safely live and survive in a cold environment, you have to know about hypothermia. Hypothermia is the lowering of body core temperature. It's prevented by having adequate shelter for the body, proper clothing. Recognize hypothermia by the victim's physical symptoms and their exposure to the environmental conditions that cause it. Avoid total rewarming of the body. Do not give any liquids, especially hot liquids or alcohol. It's treated with warm objects or body-to-body -body rewarming, which is safe, slow, and gentle.